Andy, thanks for taking the time to to join me on this conversation. Appreciate you being yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Happy to be here. So I, f- from the previous conversation that we had over over email exchange, I think you said you're based in Hawaii. You said just now you're in Honolulu. Um, but yes. I think on Instagram, I think I saw somewhere that you were in Oahu. Is that still the same place? Is that a different place? Yes, it is the same place. So Oahu is the island and Honolulu okay. is the city. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I one of my favorite shows, Lost, was actually filmed there, right? Yes. I think that's how yeah. I know it. I was like, oh, it's super cool that she's from there. So, yeah. Were you uh, like, how how long have you been there for? Um, I've only been here for about a year and a half. It actually was not my intention to stay here uh, this long. I left at the beginning of last year, 2020, January 2nd, to actually do a backpacking trip across uh, Asia and like Australia, but. I got about as far as Hawaii. I did a little bit of time in Australia before things happened with COVID and I've been here for the past year and a half. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, what was your intention when you left, um, from left from home? Was it, did you want to see a certain amount of the, of the world or was it just like, I'm just going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, both. I had gotten to a point with my artwork that I had like just gotten to a point where I knew that I would be able to be um, location independent and travel. And that was always my dream. That was just always what I wanted to do. I've always been one of those people that had more like fun long-term goals than career long-term goals. So (laughs) as soon as it was feasible with work for me to get out there and travel, that's what I made plans to do. Listen, I think that's that's secretly everyone's dream, probably you know, not <laughs> yeah. to have career long term goals. It's too it's too it, it's too serious. I think like I think it people is. have a form of enjoyment outside of their work. If your work, if your work and your enjoyment are one and the same, that's great. Like that's mm-hmm. you, you're, you're living your own dream, whatever that is. But I think for most people, it's two separate things. And I think it's nice when you can find that intersection. You it's almost like you've kind of aligned with your with your purpose or your or your soul at that point where everything kind of feels like you're flowing rather than hustling right yeah yeah I've been laughing because I've been thinking about the phrase dream job a lot lately because so many people will come up to me and be like oh you have like your dream job it's like I don't have a dream job I don't dream about jobs I don't want to have a job <laughs> I mean yeah I love my job but it's not like if I had my dream life it would not involve like me working it would involve a lot of fun things and travel yeah, it's just at a certain point, you just, it just becomes a shift in perspective. It's not really work. It's just life. Like I'm just doing yeah. what I do, right? It's just an extension of you. I think um, I don't want to make this too much about me, but I, last year during the the whole situation that was going on globally, for yeah. me, um, I ended up writing poetry and it wasn't something I did. And so that my form of art was, was writing poetry That's and I published so cool. a book. Yeah, I published a book. Amazing. And, you did wow yes yeah I'll, I'll send the link to you i'll, yeah, I'll send please. it to you I'd I, think, to see it. I think it when people ask me oh how did you do that you know you got a full-time job and all that kind of stuff and i feel like it was just a natural extension of my creativity it's not like i i forced myself to do it, it wasn't a chore i didn't carve out time. Right. it was like this is a part of me just like going to the toilet or waking up or eating you right just, you have to feed that part of yourself as well right Yeah, it's been so beautiful to see, despite everything and all the chaos in this last year, I think there's been this huge movement towards like introspection, almost like we've all like the whole world for a period of time was forced to like sit at home and sit with ourselves and be with ourselves and think about what makes us happy in those moments when we can't go out and distract ourselves in those those same ways. And there's been so much art. And I've talked to so many people who've who've had these create this creativity that they felt like was always there, but they just could never really access, like come out in the last year. And it's been such a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. hundred percent. What, um, what's coming up for you then over the last year? Well, I, a lot has changed for me. Um, my whole business model has changed in the last year because of me being in one place. So my whole, um, I guess, plan going into 2020 was to be nomadic, was to be a digital nomad. At that time, I was making money through drop shipping prints. So I really had almost end commission work, so I, which was all digital. So I really didn't have any ties to any location. As long as I had a good Wi-Fi connection, I was solid. So that was my plan was to keep it kind of at that level for a year while I was backpacking. And then when I got back or wherever I ended up, to kind of expand and make things a little bit more solid, a little bit bigger. But because I've been here, um, the plan has changed and I kind of shifted my focus. I'm thrilled to do it either way. I think that's something that I'm very good at is keeping things really open and like being open to having a lot of different paths. 
Um, but I just shifted the focus to being a little bit more like, like doing the kind of the online store thing, having an inventory, you know, focusing more on products and branding and merchandise, which I would not have been able to do if I was um, traveling long term. But then outside of that, I've also gotten back into uh, traditional painting, which is something I used to do all the time and has been really amazing for my digital work has been able to get back into like doing painting, which I probably wouldn't have done if I was backpacking across Asia. You know, I wouldn't have had the time and the energy and space to do these big paintings, which has been fun. It's funny how when you're like open to the unknown or open to following you know the direction of where things are going there's a lot more blessings there to be to be grateful for but you have to be open enough to receive them um and i think a lot of us probably get stuck in the friction of like this isn't what i planned like this isn't going the way i thought it'd go what am i going to do now rather than seeing like oh this big open space uh, maybe i've kind of paused here for a reason yeah i think a lot of people struggle with that i see a lot of that struggle um with people that i've met who are like starting journal journeys similar to mine I think it's, again, one of my gifts is that whenever I've like looked at my life and my career and my future, I've always just thought like, okay, well, the ultimate goal is I want to travel. I want to live freely. I want to do what I love. And there's always been many forms for me that I felt like that could take, like that could take a lot of things. And I even said, when I got, you know, to all my family members and people who were skeptical when I was leaving for my trip for traveling, they were like, well, what if it doesn't work out? You've only been doing this for a couple of months, you know, like been on your own for a couple of months. And, and I always said, well, I'll get a job at a coffee shop. It doesn't matter. Like, that's not the point. The point that I, I don't need that to make me happy. The point is that I'm just getting out here and doing it. And I think that that flexibility and having that attitude of going into it, like it's, it's not going to fail because that's not like my career and all this, like, it's about me having the experience and being open to whatever. I think that was the reason why it actually took off and got incredibly successful. Cause I was just so open to this idea of like, well, if it fails, it's not, wasn't meant to be. And it's so funny how opportunities come up for you when you have that attitude. It's it, you just sound so, I guess, confident um, saying that. And obviously you've, you've lived it for a while now. And, and like you said, a lot of people do struggle with that because they, I get, I don't know what the word is to use, overthink, overthink things too much um, and get too anal about the details of how it's all going to be six months from now, three months from now. Like, what if this happens? What if that happens? But I really think that there's power in just stepping forward in, in a particular direction. And then 50% is the work that you do. And then 50% is the universal, whatever energy, whatever you want to call it, that then guides you the rest of the rest of the way but you have to be willing to take that first oh, step totally. it's almost like a reward like I've found in the past year like I'll find like the more flexible I am like the more rewards I get from the universe because of it it's like if I can go into a situation and work on being stress-free and work on not being worried about how it looks like it's what it's going to look like it's like the universe is like, good job here. Here's this great opportunity. Like you, you're working on it. You're getting better. You're on the right path. And I just find these little moments of like validation where like the work I'll, I'll be doing or, and, and in the work I'm doing is like a lot of it is just st taking a step back, right? It's just taking a step back from that obsession with detail and planning and being like, okay, I can't, I have to get out of my head with this. And then I'll, you know, make a connection with someone like I just made a connection with a really incredible woman based out of Canada who's um, going to be my bookkeeper and she her uh, tagline is bookkeeping for superhero for modern day superheroes and I just totally met her super randomly through an acquaintance and you know just stuff like that will happen where I'll be like I'm struggling but I'm going to try not to let it overwhelm me and then the universe will just kind of like hand me a solution that's really beautiful. But did you always have that perspective was it something you cultivated over time? I think that, well, I worked my ass off to get to a point where like I was self-sufficient with my art. Um, so that is almost like a different story of like how I worked to get to a point where I was able to even think about like, you know, traveling and that type of stuff. But I definitely like my spiritual perspective on it changed when I got to Hawaii, which is a very spiritual place. I think anyone will agree. Anyone who has spent time here would agree with that. But it felt like I had a good metaphor for when I first got here. It felt like, um, like it was the strangest feeling because I knew that when I would leave for my trip, I was like the sense that my whole life was going to change, but I had no idea what that was going to look like. And I knew it was going to be the best thing ever. But again, like I had absolutely no idea. Like I couldn't even conceptualize what 
the next few years were going to bring, except that it was going to be really good. And so it was almost like kind of like blindly, like stepping into something and you like, you're pretty sure it's going to be the best. But when I got here, it felt like, like stepping onto like a stepping stone in the river and you're, you don't know if it's going to be like slippery or not, but it wasn't. And it was just like really firm. And then as I saw the next step, then the next step appeared in front of me and then the next one. And at first I was like, it was freaky, but then I started realizing that it just was always going to be okay. Like I was on my path. Like it, I had taken that first step. And then after that first step, it was like just this, almost this knowledge that what I was doing was, was right. But I, I remember even in the first few months that I got here, I've met so many incredible people on this Island. So many people who I never thought, like, I always thought that I was totally like alone in that kind of ideology or that like motivation to just live life really freely and get out there and travel and do whatever I wanted, which obviously I'm not alone, but I came from a very small farm town in the Midwest. And it was, my whole brand was based off of me feeling like an alien. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. I felt like no one could relate to what I was going through with just how I wanted to live my life and who I was as a person I am as a person. And then I got here and I met all of these incredible people who share so many of my same values. And someone told me when I first got here and I can't remember who it was, but they told me that it's a real gift to be able to listen to what's being told to you, like from the universe, like to hear it and then like, listen to it. And that's something that not everybody does. Like you kind of will hear that voice or that path will come up for you. That opportunity will come up for you. And I think it's like our human selves, our ego is like, I don't know. I need a plan. I need a breakdown. I need an outline. At least that's how I've always been. But if you just take a step back and kind of trust that the signs are working towards you, this is where you're being led. It often works out way better. I think you can't even see the full picture. So it's, when you, when you think about it, it's like, it's stupid to intervene, it is. you know, with your ego. It's, it is. And, and I think you need to shift your perspective from like, you know, I'm doing this to like, I'm just a vessel or a channel or whatever exactly. it is. And I feel like that was a shift that I made coming out from 2019 and going into last year was I'm just a vessel for creativity or expression of expansion, ascension, whatever it is you want to call it. And from that place, you empty yourself and then you can allow whatever it is to come through. And, and, and the tricky part, at least for me, was to not judge what it is that's coming out because you, you're not the best judge of, of what it is because your, your conditioning kicks in you're like oh no that's not good enough are people going to like it it doesn't matter that's not that's not the point the point yeah. is to, to give birth to whatever it is and it has a life of its own like your art has a life of its own it's not your art really it's just an expression it's a it's a, it's a branch of of who you are so um yeah. yeah I think I think there's something to to be said about emptying yourself so you can allow the creativity to to flow through you more freely um but yeah, what like just just rewinding a little bit, I guess you you mentioned growing up in the um, mid, mid was it the Midwest? You said what was that yeah. like? Like what area of of, of the US is that? Because obviously I'm not so, I'm not as familiar with that. Yeah, <laughs> so I grew up in Michigan, which okay. is actually uh, one of the few pretty easily recognizable states in the United States because it's right up at the top and has lots of water around it. Um, but I grew up in a very small farm town, um, very conservative. I grew up in a very conservative family. And I don't know. I mean, it wasn't great <laughs> on my end. I think that like I there's I, I definitely kind of got out as soon as I could and went to college and kind of never looked back. But a lot of people that I grew up with did not have that same experience. I'm definitely kind of like the black sheep of the of the town that I am from. What did you study at college? Um, I actually have a degree in English literature with a minor in fine arts, um, but I focused on image and narrative. I kind of custom created a course studying graphic, novel, graphic novels and comic books. I'm really interested in, I'm really interested in the conveying of information through imagery and in the West in America, it's so, there's this huge stigma attached with um, image and narrative combined. There's this like judgment towards pictures with 
books, like it's juvenile, like it's for kids, like you're unintelligent if you have to learn by looking at a picture and also reading text, which is so absurd. Well, <laughs> in the, most... mind, the mind works in pictures. That's the stupid. No, that's exa ever. exactly. And it's just so ridiculous. And I always grew up being really interested in comic books and stuff. And then when I was pursuing my degree in literature, I took some really beautiful um, courses multicultural literature courses that included graphic novels that were serious, that were explaining these very serious historical events or talking about things that were really heavy. And I was so struck by that because as an artist and how my brain works, I completely absorb information in that way. And just learning about um, the different intentions behind the artists with these graphic novels that were more serious was always really inspiring to me. And then I actually had the chance to see um, Art Spiegelman speak, who wrote Mouse. He wrote some of the most famous, famous graphic novels uh, about the Holocaust. He actually pioneered this new genre of comics, graphic novels that was in America that was kind of like, it can be serious. This can be addressing something that is hard and heavy and using imagery that we can understand because, you know, we're people, that's how our brains work. And after hearing him speak and hearing him go through each, like he went through several pages of his book, just on the stage. It was like a truly like transcendent experience. It was wild. It was like watching a genius at work. And he was explaining, um, kind of each panel almost like just black and white, like what each line meant to him. And when you're studying literature, it can be kind of, it's amazing, but it can be kind of interesting because you, you always get those moments where you're like, okay, did this, you know, small thing really symbolize all of this? Like, did it really, like, did the author really mean, you know, all this by just one, one small thing? And sitting there listening to Art Spiegelman talk, it, it was like, yes, every single thing that he had drawn in these books in this graphic novel meant something. And so after that, I kind of tailored my degree and talked to my professors to study uh, literature alongside of, of drawing and narrative and comic books with the intention of, you know, just learning about more about that and wanting to go into the world with that kind of intention. Like, I think that there's so much more to just art and text and literature separately. Like it's all, it's all the same really. Yeah. It's just different forms of expression. So yeah. I think, I think um, there is no right and wrong way of doing it. Everyone just has their own unique way of expressing a particular message. Cause I think a lot of the stuff can be told in, uh, I think what I'm trying to say is a lot of the messages are similar, but the messenger is what makes it unique. Um, yeah. Just like if you look on YouTube, there's a thousand motivational topics or a thousand books on on self-help whatever but the perspective that each person brings is slightly different and that speaks to one crowd over over another so i guess we, we just got to find that space that's that's unique for us um and that takes a bit of confidence and um self-belief that actually what i have to say is important so um what was that journey like for you emotionally that kind of getting to terms with the fact that this is this is what i enjoy and yeah, I mean, it's a form of unique expression. Well, it's always been kind of strange because I really have only been doing this, like working for myself and doing my art full time for about a year and a half, um, not very long. I was always just doing it kind of on the side, kind of like how you described with your poetry. I was working full time and in college and working all these jobs, but I would come home and and create. And it wasn't like extra work. It was just it just became this thing I was building for fun, you know, as something that was a hobby for me. So when I started doing this full time, I kind of had this weird little crisis where all of a sudden all the stuff that I was doing for fun turned into my job. And it was really strange for a minute because truly like my art, I'm, I'm so, I'm so blessed to to say that it's all just self-indulgent. It's all stuff. It's just my, the inside of my brain. Like when you look at my website or my Instagram, it's like what the inside of my brain looks like. It doesn't, it feels like an extension of myself. It feels like just me doing my thing. And so I've had, I think my biggest struggle has been like imposter syndrome. Really? I, I remember when I like hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, I was like, okay, well, when I hit 50,000 followers, I'll feel like I'm doing something. And then I hit 50,000 followers and I was like, all right, well, yeah, but you know, I was, that doesn't really feel it. when I hit a hundred thousand followers, I'll feel like I'm successful. And, and I did, and, and that didn't feel, it, it really didn't feel like anything else because it, it still is this level. I think this level of removal with it being over the internet that feels a little bit different, but, but even still, like I, 
I've been gift, I've been blessed to just be myself this whole time. You know, I'm, I don't feel like I've really changed. I've definitely gained a lot of confidence, but it's confidence that comes through knowing that people like when they're following me and when they want to hear what I have to say, they just, if I like mess it up or if I do something dumb, like that's part of it. Like I've never been putting myself out like on a platform where I wasn't just like this exact person. Like I do all my videos in like one shot because I don't really know how to edit. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, you know, you're just getting what you see. And, and I like that because I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be anything else. And so I guess the confidence that I've gotten over the past, like six months to a year to keep doing this is coming from the fact that I know that I'm not faking anything. You know, I'm not putting anything out there that I don't believe in. And so the people who are fans, my fans or who, who love my work or who follow me and follow my journey, they're there for me. And so at a certain level, like I have to kind of accept that that's cool, you know, and I can't have imposter syndrome about everything, but, but yeah, I think that knowing that people are there to like interact with me and like engage with my art and are truly inspired by what I'm doing brings me a lot of confidence it makes me feel really good I think confidence comes over time as well it's like once you once you start that journey then it becomes easier and easier to just for, for, for it to just come naturally to you and then you just start believing more in yourself and you become less worried about what other people think I mean at least oh, that's, totally. what the, that's what's happened with me um you know with the with the, the journey with poetry it was it was kind of like well this is the ins like you described this is the inside of my brain this is the inside of my heart my soul whatever and i'm just putting it on paper if it makes sense it makes sense and to those who it will make sense to they're the ones who are meant to read it i don't care what anyone else thinks really um and it's it's a self-indulgent process so it's really like you come in from the heart space and from that space there is no scarcity there's no fear there's no um limitations and so yeah. then opportunity that does open up and you do find people who resonate with it it's stupid to think that in a world of eight billion people no one's going to resonate with it that's obviously the fear the fear and the conditioning and all that kind of stuff speaking like you're, yeah. you're really telling me eight billion people in that group of people there's not going to be someone who's willing to pay you or to have a conversation with you or to give you some attention for what you do so it's yeah it's really right. kind of just stepping into knowing who you are and that that it's a journey it's a process um but yeah, I think like in terms of your your artwork as well. Obviously, anyone who looks at look, looks at your feed, and if they haven't seen your feed, um, what's the what's the handle? Spooky girl art, right? Yep, spooky girl art. Yep, um, definitely go and have a look at that. And I think just I was I was actually scrolling through and I was looking at. It's interesting. So when you scroll through someone's feed, especially if they've been posting for a while, like you have or I have, you can see where the transitions happen. You oh yeah see, you can see when someone has grown or where their head or their heart was i at, call them at level time. up moments yeah yeah so i think you do you, you definitely see that and i've seen that in your art so talk me through that like when you look at it yourself if you have yeah what like how does that feel for you oh yeah well i always encourage people to do that when people are are, are contacting me or talking to me i will encourage them to go through my page and try and find those moments where i got better and i or i leveled up which is how i like to I like to think about it because there are very tangible moments, like very visible moments through like, especially my Instagram feed where you can see my processes changing or improving or like a moment where I discover something about my style and I move forward with that. I like that. I mean, I, I don't even know if I have much to say about it, just then that's how art works for me. And I believe that that's how art works for everyone. And I think that it's just a little bit more transparent with the type of like medium that I'm using and how often I post. So several of those moments, like I can go back through and I can find the exact drawing and I know exactly what happened. I know exactly the headspace I was in to like, you know, level myself up. And other drawings are just like, I was just experimenting one night and I discovered something that really worked for me or whatever. And, and I moved forward. So it's always evolving and always changing and just like me. And that's something that I was, I was actually thinking, I've been thinking a lot about over the past couple months as I'm like, I'm like kind of doing some rebranding, not really rebranding. It's funny because it's technically, yeah, it's technically like rebranding, but it's really just doing what I've always wanted to do from the beginning. And now I'm finally able to do it. But one of the things that I've been really proud of myself and my Instagram following for is that I started it maybe five years ago or something when I was 21, 22. And my demographic, as I have age through my 20s has totally followed me and like that's what I want I want 
to always be telling my story and like telling a genuine story of growth and like my changes and my evolution through my artwork and how that's going to change. I like when people have been like, oh, I've been following you for five years and I've seen like, this is what you did five years ago for me. And this is what you're doing now. And it's crazy because it is. And it's so cool to see. And it's so doable. Like I am changing and growing through my artwork because I sit down every single day and I draw and it's not just, I draw on my iPad, I paint and I, you know, try and do all these other different experimental things. And I like really engage in those creative processes. And so I am leveling up a lot and you can go through my page and you can see it. And I hope that it inspires people to like, keep doing what they're doing because like you can go back through your own stuff. And even like, I'm sure with your writing with anyone, you can go back through old stuff and see where you were. And to me, that's one of the biggest motivators that I have. Um, just like looking back through a journal of like a spiritual journey or a, a problem that you had a year ago and reading through it and being like, oh, I totally, that's not even a problem anymore. I fixed it. It feels really good because you forget about that. At least I forget about that stuff a lot. Like I'll look at what I'm doing right now and it'll be like, this is the, this is everything. I can't see my past and I can't see my future. I'll get so absorbed in it. So being able to go back through and like, look at moments where I've changed and grown over the past like two or three years is really awesome. Well, what's, what's your most like standout memories of that journey so far? Um, so there's, there was a particular moment and if you look through my feed, you can find it, but I did this drawing of a girl like diving into water, like diving into water under a night sky. And the whole style of that drawing is completely different. And it happens or that drawing kind of came out of me right after just a, a bunch of really transformative experiences I had with friends, like kind of over quarantine, like over the first couple of months, there was like four of us when, when Honolulu was locked down and we were all living together and we all, there was nothing to do. And we spent a month being creative. And it was like, at the end of that month, I just was like, my brain was in a completely different spot. And I did this drawing and it kind of, and I did a few drawings after and to this day, those two, those two or three drawings remain like my top selling, most viral. I don't know what, and, and it's funny because like, I mean, I, I, they're amazing drawings. I don't think that they're bad or anything, but I'm kind of always wondering like, when am I going to have another big, big moment like that, where I produce three or four things that are going to carry me through the next five years? Like, damn, that was <laughs> intense, but it was born out of this really beautiful um, period of creativity. And I, I rem and I know why those drawings like happened then I was just like really in this like super stress free, locked in the house with nothing to do but draw. And my creative brain was just like super open. So if you scroll back through the my page, you can definitely see like those few um, drawings and and basically after those drawings, my whole career totally changed. It was it everything took off a bunch of them went viral and my following doubled and, and of course that was never my intention it, it was just like it just kind of happened but that was probably my that's probably my strongest memory about <laughs> that one of those yeah moments. i think i think when you look back at your feed definitely i can see that that last year has been your 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 most recent work is obviously your your best work i don't know if you want to put it that way but you can yeah. tell there's a lot more there's a lot more um impact to the to the work that you've done over the last year just because the colors pop a lot more your own style is coming through a lot more like there's a lot more f like fullness in the, in, in the, in the artwork, if that makes sense. Like when you look back at the, the previous stuff there, there's like, I think you're dipping your toes trying to yeah. figure it out. And it seems a lot more two dimensional. There's, there's, there's a f like more pale colors, that kind of stuff. And then as time goes on, obviously you're using your iPad and then uh, moving it now and more into, into painting, but I, I could definitely see like the popping of the colors and that's what stood out to me. I can't remember exactly how it came across your page. I think it may have been from, from, um, watching Elizabeth April's page, some stuff on her page or something like that. But, um, I saw it in it and it was your most recent work from last year. Cause I think I stumbled onto your work last year and I was like, wow, like she's really encapsulating like out of world experiences. Like the only other person I've seen do that is Alex, Alex Gray I think like he oh, does wow he what does, a compliment he does he, we, well <laughs> it's coming from me so I don't know how much of a compliment that is but <laughs> I think I think he he really encapsulates um out of body out of mind out of soul experiences whatever you want to call them um yeah really in, in so much detail um but I, I saw yours and I was just like yeah this is this just really speaks to me at a deeper level and it's not 
there's no no real words required but then you've obviously got like a few sentences or a few a few phrases dotted around and that's like almost like the the dialogue that's going on in your head I feel like that's that's part of oh, what's, yeah. what's what's written on there so yeah it always is <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I definitely, you're definitely right. And it was funny coming here because I think that during the like dipping my toe in phase, I was always like, it, it's funny going back now. It's like, I, I was always, I always knew what I wanted to do. Like I always was onto it, but I also was never really a spiritual person. And I don't, and I, and spirituality plays so much into like the theme of what I do now and I, it's funny, like looking back on it and, and seeing like, like I was drawing these things and writing these things like that were going on in my own head. And I, and I didn't even know why I didn't know what they were really. And like aware, then weren't aware of it. Yeah. Like I, I didn't know, like, and I've struggled with my, my spiritual journey because of my conservative upbringing. I, uh, I still struggle with it a lot. It's still something I'm learning a lot about. But um, even just what you said about like being a vessel free for creativity, which I agree with, but that's something that like even that phrasing is a struggle for me because I was raised in the evangelical Presbyterian church, super Christian and everything you did, you did for God. You know, your body wasn't yours. It was God's. Your mind isn't yours. It's, it's God's. Everything that you're doing isn't for you. And so when I left and got out, so much of my like young adult life and early twenties was about getting that control back of myself and like figuring out who I was like as a person and having control over my own life. So now I'm kind of like starting this spiritual journey, but even at that time I was still drawing, I would be drawing these space girls with third eyes and like these kind of like very like metaphysical things. And, and people would ask me at art shows, they would come up and they'd be like, what does this mean? What does a third eye mean? What do you, like, and I know they would be searching for that answer of like, that's, you know, to talk about spirituality, to talk about what that meant to me. And I remember being like, oh, I, I don't know. Like, I just like eyes. And I remember genuinely feeling that way. Like I really didn't, you know, find any super significant meaning in my work at the beginning, but I was still doing it, which was strange. It's strange now. Cause now that I've begun my spiritual journey and I'm like looking back and like finding all these other artists like Alex Gray, it's like, I'm looking back on myself and my work. And I was like, I didn't know, like I was already kind of like tapped into something, but I just didn't know what it was. Like, I didn't know, like I was still finding my power and still finding my voice and finding my connection with spirituality, with the cosmic, with the metaphysical. And um, now that I've found that and like I'm connecting to that so much more deeply you can see that depth in my work because it's coming from this place of like true resonance like it really like I believe it I'm in it I understand what I'm doing I understand what I'm creating I'm understanding what I'm I'm meant here to do and before it's like I still like I got it but I didn't really quite it didn't resonate with me yet like it didn't sit with me like I didn't really fully grasp what I was even creating just that I was creating it yeah, I think it's really interesting that as our journeys kind of unfold and progress and we develop as characters, it, the, the work is a reflection of that as well. And mm -hmm. I think it's just um, a testament to growth and to understanding and unraveling of, of who you are. It's, it, it's, it's, it's cool to see someone who's on a journey who's constantly asking questions of themselves. That's, that's what it is. And then you, you express it. You try to express the answer through the work that you do. It's the same thing I did with poetry. I'm like, who the fuck am I? Like, that's the first yeah. chapter of the book. Who am I? Like, it's yeah. literally exploring that because I was brought up in a Hindu household. There weren't parents weren't super strict and stuff, but generally the community and the school and and the environment. I mean, it's you can put things into boxes, and let's just yeah. say I don't like boxes. So uh, <laughs> I started to ask a lot of a lot of questions. Um, I studied law at university and. I'm not doing that today. So um, ended up doing a podcast and now obviously published a book and trying to reconnect with my with my artwork because I used to do a lot of drawing in school and um, in my teenagers. And then that kind of stopped as I started studying more and more, but trying to reconnect with that. But just generally having that, that um, perspective and the feeling of curiosity arise and owning that, you know, because that's leading you somewhere when you start to, to, um, I guess be confident in the questions that you're asking and follow them they'll they'll take you to a place that's just beyond the surface of what you can see it's like you're peeling back the layers of the, re the reality that you see 
um and it takes a bit of confidence right and it's and it is scary but that's where the magic is that's where it's fun it's fun what, what's the point otherwise yeah. of just living the way that you should live like you're not going to explore you wouldn't even have the experiences that you had had you not asked the question of you know can i travel can i live this lifestyle let me do it like what what if it what, what if it does work out what, what would my life be like um so I think, yeah, the, the characteristic of curiosity is, is, is interesting. But what's like your battle with, with spirituality now? Do you feel like you know who you are? Like, or are you still on that journey of trying to figure out? And like, what's that, what's that, what has the impact been on the relationships that you had like back home as well? Um, well, I definitely feel like I know who I am as much as anyone can. You know, I know who I am in the sense that like, I know who I am, I feel like at the core, but I'm always changing, which is something I love about myself. Um, but I guess my journey with spirituality, it's still, it's not, I guess it's a, it's a struggle in the sense that everything is a struggle, that moving through life is a struggle because there's good and bad, but um, I'm just still working through. It took me a long time to even open myself up to, <sighs> I'm just, I just, I'm not really even sure how to phrase it. I think I just was, I've just have always been afraid of a loss of like control, I guess. And I maybe not control in the sense of like having control over everything in my own life, but autonomy, um, just coming from a place of feeling like I didn't have any, and didn't have any um, control over what, who I was or, or even like what I could believe. I am always like a little bit hesitant just like I was hesitant to stay in Hawaii and to expand my business because I was nervous about setting down roots. I don't like staying in one place for too long, really. I don't like subscribing to any belief too heavily. I don't like, and it's not like I'm afraid of commitment because I've committed to a lot of things, but I just, I think I'm very cautious around ideology and uh, philosophy and like life kind of plans because of uh, my upbringing. But I'm, I feel like I'm working through that. I always just, just like you said, I just like ask a lot of questions and I just kind of know that the more I, the more I know, the more I don't know. And I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, definitely don't really have great relationships with people back in Michigan though. That's, I don't even know what they think of me, honestly. It would be kind of funny to find out. Do you, do you still have like friends and family that you speak to back then? Or is it just like you've, you kind of just, when you left, it was like symbolic of you kind of, all right, I'm moving into the next chapter and like, you probably won't be coming with me. <laughs> um, I wish it was that simple. Um, I think a part of me wishes that that was the case, but I do still talk to people back in Michigan, some friends and family. It's just the type of, um, kind of the type of relationship that you have to have with family where I don't want them to feel like I'm abandoning them because I do care about them and, and love them. And I want to be there for them as much as I can, but also kind of acknowledging that we have gone separate ways and have different, and it's, it's not that I don't care about them or love them. It's just complete, a complete difference in philosophy of, of life, of politics, of morals in my opinion i mean i have now gotten to this place in my life where i'm pretty well traveled i've lived in these different places has he had these beautiful experiences and um, the people from my hometown my friends and family uh, really have not even ventured to leave the hometown you know so it's just it's just a completely different lifestyle yeah i think it becomes difficult to to um continue to like foster a relationship if the ideologies are very different and and if the person isn't or both parties aren't willing to kind of accept that you know the love doesn't change but i have to accept that you're going to make different decisions and that we have different ways of ways of living that's like the hardest thing and because it's family it's not like you can just erase them out of your life it's just they're there and so you have to kind of make the most of make the most of the, the situation um i guess like do you have siblings yeah i have a younger brother Okay, what's that? What's the what, what's it like with him? Is he, is he still back in Michigan? Yeah, him and I are close. Um, I think we kind of had to be, you know, it was kind of us against our crazy parents. But he uh, is still in Michigan. It's just so complicated in the U.S. right now with um, the pandemic because things are not there. My brother, my, I haven't seen my brother in in over a year, and I I'm going to visit Michigan soon, and I probably won't be seeing him. It's it's just really complicated with 
I, I'm not even sure how to explain it. Just like different regulations with different states and him and his uh, girlfriend are being very cautious and all of my family, uh, other members of my family aren't. And it's just like a very, because of the pandemic and because of the crazy, like kind of political um, part of it, it's really divided my family. So I don't know if I'll be seeing my brother. We're close, but um, he's still there and he's not going to be leaving anytime soon yeah no no it's 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 nice when you've got siblings that you actually get on with because um a lot of my family growing up it was like my i come from quite a big family like my dad has nine brothers and sisters and wow. my mom, yeah my mom's got like four or five siblings on her side some of which have passed away but um not everyone gets on and they can't see past the the decision making that like they can't respect each other's decisions so like at some point the relationship breaks down but for me and my brother who's he's now 26 um and I just turned 29 so it's like we get on really well and I, it's it's so nice to see that we're both able to be creative and express ourselves have different ideas but then yeah the, the love and the kind of friendship and the bond remains and kind of like that mutual respect of like you 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 can do you and I'm I'm willing to help you and support you emotionally to express yourself in the best way possible but the love remains the same that's that's pretty cool to have and it's quite rare and then for that to transfer over to friends as well I've got like two childhood friends who I just saw on the weekend who are two friends which I think are quite rare to to find in that you can't f find lots of relationships where it's kind of judgment free that's quite hard to find um so I, I just wonder like do you have um a friend circle that's still back home or a lot, a lot of your friends like the ones you picked up whilst traveling um i do have a few friends back home and i have like two or three who are my my uh, really accepting friends back home and one of them is actually going to be coming out and working for me soon so oh, I'm amazing taking them away from michigan uh but no i feel like the truest friendships that i've had i mean aside from my few friends back home and they, they know who they are but my truest friendships that I found have been uh, through traveling or here, really. I mean, I've met so many like minded people and just completely non judgmental people. But I also um, so my my like sexual identity definitely played a huge part in my story. Like I um, dated women almost all through college. And so I was really involved in like the queer spaces and the queer community. And so many of my friends and, and, and if in the queer community and the gay community, it's radical acceptance. It's this philosophy of like you almost can do can, nothing's too crazy. So my truest friends have really been through that community, even back in Michigan. And I've been lucky, like when you kind of belong to a, a band of outcasts and you can and you can band together like that and celebrate each other's differences like that's probably when where I found my truest friendships is like in those communities of, of radical acceptance, because you're right, it is very difficult. And especially like someone coming from my background with a very confusing, like sexual identity and just didn't know which way was up and was doing weird art. And I just fell into these kind of like queer spaces that really um, accepted me and and helped me like find figure out the person that I, I was. Well, what was that journey like, like figuring out your, your sexual identity? Like, I can only imagine that that was definitely not an easy journey to, to explore, let alone have the courage to explore it in the first place. Well, I think that, um, I think that going through something like that, coming out of a really conservative community, it almost makes it easier to shut the door on it in some ways because at a certain level like I couldn't deny this part of myself and I, I really wanted to after I kind of figured out what was going on I was like no you know I'm just it's in my head I'm making it up because I didn't want to go through that I didn't want to have to I, you know I didn't want to have to go through that experience with having to kind of like get out of the community that I was in and and realize that like everything was going to be harder and even more difficult than if I had just been the normal black sheep of the family or whatever. But in some ways it was a gift because I mean, even my younger brother didn't move out of my parents' house until he was 22 or 23. And even he's just now 25 starting to kind of realize 
the real situation of like my parents ideology and it's only just now that he's kind of starting to process all of this and I left my parents house when I was 16 17 <laughs> and so I've been able to be a lot more free um but it was definitely because I was like realizing those things about myself and I realized that I couldn't stay and um it was really scary and hard but like I said I was lucky to find a community you know, in college and a community of people who, who really accept me for who I was. Do you think that plays a role in your art as well? Oh, absolutely. I think my, um, my whole philosophy with what I want to do with my representation of, of women and like the female spirit is include people who don't feel like they fit in anywhere. And and I'm saying that like with the, through the lens of femininity, because that's something that I've always really um, kind of struggled with, like throughout my journey of like gender identity and my queer identity, I've always expressed in a pretty feminine way, regardless of like how I feel or like my actions or whatever. I enjoy, you know, expressing feminine. I enjoy looking traditionally pretty, whatever. But um, I also really struggled like in the gay community with that because I was, you know, not really taken seriously in a lot of ways for being like a tall, pretty blonde girl, like, oh, you know, you can't really be into girls, you don't really belong here. And so I felt like an outsider there often as well. And, um, and really my spooky girl art was born out of that feeling of like, like, I'm just a normal girl, but also an alien. And so that's why all my girls are drawn, all the girls are all drawn as like, they're beautiful women or, or like average looking women, but they just have these kind of this slight, this subtle, like the skin color, like they're obviously just from a different place. And that's how I always felt. But through the first couple of years of me kind of promoting my platform and drawing as Spooky Girl, I had so many people reach out to me, so many like trans women and uh, women of color or women with different body types or like, you know, femme presenting people who were like, man, I just never thought I would be able to find a piece of artwork that I felt like expressed what I feel like where I am this person, but I'm also like an alien, you know, I express this way, but I also feel this way. And that was so inspiring to me because not only did it feel like I was providing people with a way of like, cause representation matters so much. It was something that they could look at and be like, this feels like me. But then it also was showing me that I wasn't alone and that I wasn't an alien. And I wasn't like the only one out there who felt all these weird feelings of like being kind of confused about their own like expression and femininity and inclusion and like where they're supposed to belong. Cause I never knew, like I really, and I still don't, I kind of just never belonged anywhere. You know, I didn't really belong in the gay spaces. I didn't really belong in the straight spaces. I didn't belong in normal society. Cause I was raised in like this super insane, like culty community, but then I didn't belong in that community either. And so it was just this kind of constant search for belonging that I ended up accepting to a point of being like, okay, well, I, I just don't, I'm just from another planet. And then through that kind of ownership of that, I ended up connecting with all these other people who showed me that I wasn't alone. And they, I think, feel less alone because they are able to see themselves in my artwork. I think that's, well, I appreciate you sharing that. First of all, I think I, I, I resonate with that really deeply because I feel the, in, in a very similar way, I feel the, the connection of what you're saying, um, even though obviously I haven't gone through the exact same experiences you have. I just feel like that, that sense of belonging, the, the gap in identity where you're like, well, I don't really, I know, I know I live here, but I'm not from, a, <laughs> I'm just like a yeah. deep, deep, deep seated feeling of wanting to go back home wherever that wherever that is um and not knowing what where that is and then I think but once you accept that you you can kind of step into your power and be like I'm just I'm just gonna do me because I don't really I don't think anyone's really gonna understand me at the level that I can understand me um and so I have no choice but to just accept where I am and then just express from that place and then that's where I think like most of the magic happens because it's no one else is going to have that perspective because it's it's almost like that emotion of not belonging plus all the other emotions that you have um that are like swirling around inside you that makes like a a, a cocktail of like art that's different because no one else is feeling the exact same way that you're feeling and art does i'm not i'm not just talking about painting i'm talking about anything like conversation or um storytelling or poetry whatever it might be drawing so I think it's interesting when you when you step into that space of whoever you think you are, um, it like some something starts to shift in your path and like people start to see 
that actually there's something about this person that's a little bit different does that make sense yeah i agree with you yeah so it's it it, that's super interesting but i think in terms i wanted to also talk about like in terms of the the leveling up moments for your for your artwork you've used a few different um tools i've seen you use the micron um the the pig what they called pigma micron pens right pigma micron Mm -hmm. pens um Mm -hmm. and then procreate on on ipad and then now painting and stuff so like if you could just go through i guess a few of few of those experiences like if someone's using pigma like where does that come into your process now and then um the ipad and, and kind of just talk through that that'll be i think that'll be quite interesting for people to to hear a breakdown of that sure uh, i'll do my best uh, i actually do most of those all those different types of art like i'll do side by side so it's not like i'll go through a period where I'm only painting and I'm only drawing with pen and and ink or I'm only doing iPad. They are often all kind of together. Yesterday I worked on a painting and I did some iPad drawing. Um, I was actually kind of laughing at myself because if anyone who actually knew how to work an iPad and procreate in the way that it should be worked probably would laugh at me because I use it like a traditional artist. I don't know very much about like, I'm super impatient so I never make it through a tutorial video. And like, it's not like I do everything on one layer or anything, because that would be, you know, I, I have basic skills for digital drawing, but I truly like don't know all the shortcuts. Like I was laughing at myself because I just found this shortcut like trick just the other day. I've had my iPad for like four years and it was just like this hack that would have saved me so much time on all these drawings over the past four years. So I kind of just use my iPad almost like almost like a sketch pad. Like I don't know very much about Procreate like the tips and tricks and the, the, like, I've never, I've never, it was a graphic designer. I didn't learn Photoshop and I didn't like, you know, I didn't, I'm not coming into the digital art scene from the aspect of like a computer science background. I'm coming into it as a true artist, like as a painter. So I'll work on my iPad work and then I'll do paintings. And to me, that's almost like crossing over. I'll figure out um, different color combinations through mixing paint on a canvas that'll then translate into Procreate and be like, oh, I like these two together. Recently, I've started using um, Posca paint markers on my paintings to add this element of graphic line work that I love in my iPad. And that's an example of like that digital art translating then onto like my traditional art as well. So it's all this kind of like huge like ecosystem in my brain that I have and very intentionally cultivated because if I sit down and I just draw off my iPad every single day for a month, I will burn out. I will, I will stop. I'll hate it. I'll set it down and I won't pick it up again. I, I don't want to do it. So I have to kind of keep my brain really stimulated by doing these paintings, doing drawings with pen, um, and then kind of rotating everything out because it helps keep my creative brain stimulated. It helps create, um, new problems for me to solve because all of my leveling up moments come through problem solving. Um, That's one of the biggest tips I give to artists who are asking me how to find their own style or how I found my own style is um, to draw, even if it's on an iPad or paint or whatever you're doing, and don't like erase the mistake, you know, like don't press the undo button just try and figure out how you can incorporate it, make that line a little bit thicker, make the edge curvier than you might norm, like than you would have in the past, like try and figure out a way to solve the problem in a way that's a little bit different. Cause that's usually how I find most of my cool style elements. It'll be like when I accidentally hit the wrong brush on procreate and I'm like, wait, that looks really cool. Actually, you know, it's usually born out of a mistake truthfully and the creative problem solving is almost always how I come up with my better ideas it's like on the fly but if you're just like open to that kind of flow of being like okay i'm not just going to hit the undo button with digital art i feel like that can be a downfall sometimes where you can just undo stuff it's like actually those moments are what allow the most growth so if i mix in traditional artwork alongside that digital art it allows me to solve these problems in a different way to come up with new you know little details or flourishes that I might not have added before and all those things come together to build my style that you see on Instagram or that I sell on my merchandise like all of those elements play into what I end up like producing so when you see um when you, when you obviously look at your artwork the, the, the finished product looks the, the, the way it does and no one can see like the building up process or the the whole evolution of, of where it started but like for you what does it start as an image in, in your head or do you just sketch and kind of follow 
however you feel and see see where it goes like how does that process look I usually just kind of do it all on the fly um if I ever have an idea in my head it doesn't turn out that way like I can have some like colors or you know a basic thing but it just ends up frustrating me I usually just kind of sit down and go for it I've been recently having like with my paintings I've started having like dreams about some of the paintings which has never happened to me before and it's kind of cool so that might be changing with my paintings because I've just had these like very specific ideas in mind over the past couple of weeks, which is very unusual for me. Um, so maybe that'll be changing soon. I'm not really sure as my inspiration changes, but most of the time I just sit down and go. And it's actually kind of wild. I always kind of joke that the ideas, I my, my issue is not with ideas. I could sit down in front of a sketchbook that has 50 blank pages and I could draw, I could fill, I could come up with 50 different drawings ideas. I'm not trying to brag. I don't know why that is. It's just, they just all live in my brain. So for me, it's like I sit down in front of a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper and I'm just ready to go. Um, it's just my kind of my own limitation that keeps up with, that can't keep up with all the ideas I have. When you start on a, on a canvas, is it like, um, do you sketch it on there as well? Or do you just go straight, straight on with the paint? I just go straight on with the paint and you actually see some videos. I think I have a few on my Instagram and there's some on my TikTok of me just sitting down in front of a blank canvas and just going. Um, that's usually how I do it. Amazing. That's that's cool. Have you been creative in any other um, forms of expression or has it always been like drawing or, or painting? Like have you explored anything else along the way? Oh, that's I don't get asked that question very much. Um, good question. Uh, yes, I am a writer as well. I, I love poetry, so I'm very excited to hear your, or see your poems. Um, I studied writing and creative writing and li literature in college, so I do really enjoy writing. I also um, have picked up the ukulele while being in Hawaii, and I've just been absolutely loving taking time to practice that and sing every day. I've written a couple songs, which I never thought that I would do, but had just kind of came out of me and were really beautiful. And I love to dance. I mean, I have a very creative spirit. So almost anything that you can kind of do creatively, I enjoy. I just don't really like, like I'm not very athletic. So <laughs> that pretty much like live, barring like athletics, I love to sing and dance and write and, you know, all those, all those things. I like to garden and, you know, decorate my house. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to incorporate into, into like your creative expression that you haven't tried already? Um, yes, always. There's always a million things. I'm like, I have too many hobbies. Um, I have so many ideas for this, like rebrand for spooky girl as a brand. And one of the things that I would really love to do, it, it's just been on my mind recently is, um, I really love sewing and I, uh, I love like upcycling clothes and thrifting. And so I have this idea and I don't know if it'll happen, but I have this idea of incorporating, um like going thrifting and finding all this crazy like 90s like y2k um 80s super brightly colored thrifted clothes and and maybe adding some of my art to it or whatever but selling those on my site as well um as part of my brand because i just i think that first of all the recycling element of that would be really really cool and it would be super fun for me to go out and to find like i love fashion and i love clothes and i love clothing design so that would be really cool. But then um, just all of it adding to this brand and this idea that I'm trying to play on uh, a lot of like nostalgia and uh, brightly colored, you know, kind of childhood things. I think that would be really fun. I think I got that vibe. Like when I, I was watching um, Stranger Things recently, have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think I'm one of the last people to watch it, but I got the, that, that it's like the, 80s vibe from your from your work as well and actually the first thing that it reminded me of was um grand theft auto oh fan. nice <laughs> that's I, cool I used, to, I used to love playing that as a teenager and yeah. i was like oh this reminds me of grand theft auto i loved it so i was like i couldn't stop scrolling through the work and a lot of it it's more so like the work that you did over the last year like that's more reflective of grand theft auto and i was like oh these these characters are, are amazing and i think mixing that with the kind of um the popping of like the neon colors um just makes it stand out I loved it um so yeah. I think wh whatever you're doing just continue continue <laughs> believing in that spirit because you're just going to keep creating more cool shit so um yeah <laughs> thanks what, what about um your tattoos I can see that you've got two four sleeve tattoos what what do what are they of um this one isn't done yet uh this one is 
I'm only going to show you this one really because the other ones are pretty hard to see, but I've got my okay, space yeah. girl tattoo here. Oh yeah. Nice. Um, had to do it, you know, but this is a full, it's very complicated, but this is a full like fantasy themed sleeve. Okay, so so you're I, doing it, you're doing it in parts. Is it, it's not done yeah. yet. Okay. Well, this one is mostly done, um, but this is fantasy themed and this is sci-fi themed. So we got the two arms going on. Nice. What are your, what are your like favorite, um, films and TV shows and stuff? Um, so my favorite movie is the fifth element, um, with Bruce Willis and probably my second favorite movie, which is hard for me to admit is Valerian in the city of a thousand planets, because it's also directed by Luke Besson, who did, um, fifth element. The story isn't as good, but visually, I think it's probably one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. Um, and then I really love the show Steven Universe. I just got finished watching it again. <laughs> one of the most deeply spiritual shows I think I've ever seen. And then um, the I think if there was one show that had a direct impact on my artwork and my artistic journey, it would be that one. The artwork in that is so inspiring to me and the color schemes and the way that it's styled. And then I'm really inspired by the creator of that show, Rebecca Sugar, who is um, one of the first uh, female writers on Cartoon Network to ever like have a whole show. So I'm really inspired by her journey and her representation of the LGBT community through that show. And then I really just love sci-fi. I'm a super huge sci-fi and fantasy nerd. So anything basically in that genre. I love that. I, I go check out some of those actually. I haven't actually watched them. So I'll make a note of that. And, uh, you should check out Steven on. Universe. It's a very, I think that you would like it. It's a very, um, it's like a, a show directed towards kids, but very spiritual, raises some really beautiful questions about life and experiences and, and beautiful art. Yeah, no, I definitely checked that. Was it on Cartoon Network, did you say? Yes, Cartoon Network. <laughs> I love that as a kid, Cartoon Network. Used to, uh, it reminds me of um, Dexter's Laboratory, Cow and yes. Chicken, Ed, Ed and Eddie. These are classic shows. I don't think they show some of them now. They're hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely um but what do you like you're in Hawaii now you said you might travel back home for a bit to to Michigan do you have any plans on like where you want to move to next and like what areas you want to travel like is there anything anywhere that you haven't seen yet that you want to see oh I mean everywhere I didn't make it very far on my journey so I would hope I would like to continue that at some point um I'm gonna go to Michigan for about a week just to kind of finish up like take care of some affairs there I came here with a backpack and now I live here actually met and married my partner um, over this past year. So I kind of have a, a home here now, which was not part of the plan, but uh, I'm not sure where we will go after this. I definitely do want to continue my travels um, and go. I'm probably going to try to go to New Zealand, Australia next if possible. Um, but I also have been just thinking Africa has been out of my mind a lot lately, but I also want to just, of course, wait until everything is safe and make smart decisions about that. And um, we'll see what my partner is up to. I'm not sure if he would want to come or be able to come or if it would be something that I would do on my own. Yeah. Well, congrats on, on getting married. Or is it this, this year? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, Africa has been on my mind as well, to be honest. Um, that was I, that was supposed to be part of my plan last year to go back home. Um to Uganda and Kenya like some of my family's from there like my mom's from Kenya and dad's from Uganda so I wanted to go back and see that and then also I'd do a tour of the safari and stuff um, oh. but none of that none of that happened because um, I had a few yeah. friends who actually um, they do organize tours on like um, like private organized tours for for safaris and stuff and I'd be happy to introduce you if that if that time ever ever, ever comes super down to earth nice nice couple like they, they they've just started oh, doing it but they've got a ton of connections in in um in kenya so yeah that'd be really exciting if that time comes for you then I'll what do they do with that. tattoos there that's been a big question on my mind like as i've gotten all these tattoos i've been like man i hope this doesn't impede my like travels what was it say that again how do they do with the tattoos are like well, in, in, uh, kenya? in i have no idea i've, I've not, you have no I've, idea uh, yeah i don't I I guess I'll find <laughs> out you will find yeah you'll find out i, <laughs> I 
yeah i i want to get tattoos as well but i have no idea what to get yet so i'm like i'm not rushing into it i'll see what what's whatever speaks to me at the time it speaks to me then i'll i'll get, I'll get them done but yeah um well no i i appreciate you making the time to speak this has been this has been awesome just di- diving into your journey a little bit more because there's only so much you can you can get from like the the videos that someone posts or from images that you know that your that your artwork shows obviously it's a reflection of you but i think like speaking to someone you can connect with them on a on a deeper level so i appreciate you mm-hmm. you sharing a part of your journey yeah i like doing stuff like this one of the biggest things i've struggled with over the past like 6 months of gaining kind of a lot more inter internet fame is I never wanted to be like, I never want to be like an influencer. Like I, I struggle with, I I struggle with posting too much of myself. Like I don't, I just don't like, I don't want to invite, I don't know, like too much attention on me. I wanted to always be about my art. And so I struggle with like how much I should be saying or how much I should be like talking about myself. Cause I also know that people do want to get to know me and they want to see me and stuff, but I enjoy doing stuff like this because I, I think I do have a pretty interesting story and I have a lot of stuff that I want to share, but that's actually something that I'm hoping to um, roll out in the next couple of months with my like reopening is I'm going to be opening up a Patreon, which is where you can subscribe at different levels for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a month. And through that platform, I want to be doing a lot more of like um, even like conference calls with people who can ask me questions about um, getting started, business tips, places like I want to have that be kind of a space where I can connect with people more um, on my terms to be able to tell a little bit more about my story and, and help people in a way that like makes sense. Cause sometimes I still get a little like freaked out about just like putting it all out there, just like on the internet for everybody to see. So it's been an interesting kind of thing, navigating that. Um, but I really appreciate you reaching out. This has been really fun. And I like, I like talking about what I've been through. It's a, it's an interesting story. I think, I think it's, um, I think the, the reason that people would be interested in hearing it is because they want to see like the 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 energy behind the art it's like who's who's making all this like <laughs> there's obviously a story there and I think they'll probably connect with your work a lot a lot more deeply the more you share where it's come from basically like yeah. it's 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 your own story so I think the more you step into your story as well and you 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 kind of own that people will be able to see it more and I think you as a result even though it's a byproduct as a result your sales will probably start going up whether it's from the same individuals or from them referring and, and you um, having new people by I think just the story just it's it's just unique like so the story's been on my mind up for the last few years like your your own story and the fact that everyone has it and you don't have to be an influencer or a celebrity to have a story or to have something tragic happen to you like whatever you've gone through is enough of a story to interest and inspire other people you just have to step into it and um, own it and share it share it in your own way so um, I feel like that's part part of part of the the journey to to me, getting, <laughs> yeah. to me getting the book out there it was express having the courage to express express myself and then people can understand you through conversation like this you could you have a chance to dive into it a bit more deeply so yeah appreciate you doing that um what's the best place for people to kind of connect with your your work as it stands right now and like um and to find out more about you so as it stands right now, Instagram for the next month, my Instagram is spooky girl art, but I also have a website shop spooky that has a really, um, kind of detailed bio and it's got a little bit more about me and some of my work, but right now over the next month, I'm, that website is going to be kind of under construction. I'm working on bringing a bunch of new products to the site, as well as bringing back some kind of, uh, throwbacks. Like I'm looking to introduce some kind of retro gaming to add to the site, some like personality quizzes. I want to kind of bring back that nostalgic feeling of, of hanging out on the internet, like on the, in the MySpace era, you know, I want to add some uh, activities to bring to my site so that when you go onto it, you see cool things in my color scheme in addition to my products. So you can check out my work at shopspookygirl.com. But I would say right now for a more complete kind of breakdown with videos of what I'm doing and everything, Instagram is the way to go. Awesome. Well, hopefully we can do this again in the, in the coming months or the, or the coming year, just, and then obviously we'll have a few more um level up moments to talk about as you continue <laughs> yeah. down your journey but yeah thanks so much and i'll speak to you soon yeah